Good morning. I'm Lynn. I'm Arnie. And welcome to another day at Utopia Farms. Are they wrinkles? <laughs> Could be. So we're going to talk a lot about all the troubles you can have with rams as opposed to ewes today. Including small testicles, supplements you need to give rams, blood on the back of a ram's behind, urinary calculi, rams fighting, moving rams, cleanup rams, ram squeeze pens, and finally a new breeding group. So let's get started. Now we, uh, we want to show you some things we've been noticing about uh, the two rams we just bought in from uh, the Classic. So, I don't know if this one's, who, which one is this one? This one's got a Q. Quincy, okay. Quincy, this is Quincy. We're in the pen with Quincy that we just bought. He runs at me every time. I only just caught him because he's easy to catch because he runs at you trying to hit you. I think he does want attention, but uh, this is the ram I'm most leery of right now. But what we were noticing, it is a very cold morning here. I mean, almost freezing, but not. And we were looking at his testicle size. We don't recall him being that small when he was purchased, but today he's looking really, really small. So it kind of worries us because uh, rams, um, that's usually the first thing people mention when they see rams for the first time. That, that was really, uh, that was a talented move, Arnie. Uh, like, uh, what is this? Sumo wrestling? But, um, testicles are on a ram are, um, they're supposed to be large and even. They're there. And we're hoping that he's just cold and holding them up because, uh... You know, you know I think I'm bigger than that. Okay, we can't put that on. <laughs> Actually, to be honest with you, I would, I would classify that, if I felt them, yeah. I would classify that uh, borderline from, I wouldn't accept it. That is just quite small. But is he holding them up and well, they're just, shrivelly? Just, just the diameter of them, Lynn. If I put a tape around that, Lynn, I would question that. But we'll see how good a job you do. Yeah. So we don't, we don't like that. Uh, this ram always tries to hit me. Um... So that would be a good reason for me to not want him around. But we, well, paid, we paid a lot of money for that ram, so we're hoping that it's a cold day and uh, he's just uh, holding them up. But we're going to go have a look at Hilton, because same, uh, they're related, they're half brothers. So we'll see uh, if the cold is, if they both look the same, I'm going to say it's cold. And we're supposed to get a warm day coming up. So we'll compare, we'll come back on the warm day and show you again. Yes, yeah, she's a gorgeous yo. Hello. All of them are gorgeous. Even the old girl. Where is he? Oh, there he is. This you know what we're gonna do? We're gonna look at these and we're gonna look at our lambs. There he is. This is the same thing. Same thing. Okay, he's looking at me. I just don't trust these rams. This one has never gone for me yet, but this guy, whoa, look at the shoulder on him. Yeah, this guy's got a real short front end on him, yeah. Holy, he looks like a buffalo. But the, the make a good, uh, the make a, you look at them, we've seen these two that we purchased. Yeah. Let's go look at our lambs later on, and we'll see if they're so tight like that too. Same temperature then. Yeah, I'm guessing they're probably right. But uh, you get nervous, eh, when you spend a lot of money and you got rams in use that they're not going to work out for you. So we're just as a trial going to... Oh, and Ferdinand, war paint again. Really? What is that? What oh, yeah, is that? You did a real consistent job of it. What have you been up to? You see Ferdinand and uh, Gaston always hang out together. Okay, we're going to look at our guys because we know our guys have... Um, 
are are well endowed. Don't get hit. Well, the only one that wants to hit me again is the one we bought in, Handsome here. Well, yeah, Granny is looking pretty wrinkled up today too. <laughs> yeah, I'm thinking they're cold, Arnie. Yeah. Oh, he do he doesn't look wrinkled up. Huh? He doesn't look wrinkled up. That's general. Well, we used him last year, didn't we? Yep. We had good lambs off of him. Yep. Sometimes, yeah. Sometimes you think you picked the best rams, but you wonder. But look at his testicles. He's a definitely. Uh, There's a guy here. Animal. He's the best. Look at that. Oh yeah, definitely large there. Oh, this guy. Let me uh, and his were measured. Yeah, they're large. Yeah. Yeah, it's a bit worrisome. Yeah, I'm with those two. That I'm a little nervous about that. Yeah, because uh, definitely. Um, I'm not seeing a problem here. And, Animal. and these guys are outside even. Animal. Now, th and this is the one we kept of our own that we thought had smaller testicles. That's why we didn't use them. And I'd say they're about the same size as the guys indoors. Where's Glad? Oh, Glad's up by you. Yeah, even that guy, big, 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 all big, yeah. all well, we're big. Picking, we're picking for that. Gladiator's big too. Glad. Whoa, he almost got left in the truck to go to Western Ontario to that. No. Dairy farmer that has an excellent amount of money. No, he didn't. Hey, you would have been a, you would have been a milk check, buddy. Yeah. So, um. Yeah, not liking the testicle sizes on those two uh, rams we just purchased. I don't know why we wouldn't have noticed that earlier. No, well, they're actually at the shoulder. They look quite good. But, uh, well, why would they shrink? Because they've been breeding? <laughs> it's cold, eh? It's I know, but it's cold, and these guys are outside. It's colder out here. In this barn, we have all the replacement lambs. We got all the rams that are up for sale on this portion and we have all our replacement ewe lambs at the back so again we keep the grain in a bin up here that is rodent proof and um, we have it stored there we mix it ourselves that's what the rams are getting what's in the ram feed that's oh, not it's, uh, feed. It, it's, uh, I, I'm just still feeding some uh, creep feed. Oh, okay. So, so they are getting creep feed still. So same as the others, except um, it's just a little bit. And he's added crushed limestone to it, which is acidic, which helps to break down any stones from forming. Ewes don't have a problem with uh, urinary calculi, or, or, or perhaps they can, but I have never seen it, never heard of it, never experienced it. So we only put it in uh, the ram lambs here, and our, our older rams in the front of the barn, they get it as well in their grain mixture. And as you can see, Killer went up to eat again. Hopefully, I don't know if the limestone would have worked that quickly and helped uh, get rid of it, but he seems get, like he's getting better. I'm not going to jinx it, but it's a good sign anyway. I'm feeding creep feed because uh, creep feed has limestone in it too. Uh, I'm not actually adding a little more. Yeah. Okay. Well, and there, these are still lambs. They look like adults. <laughs> But um, these, the oldest would be like 10 months old and the youngest would be about eight. So they're still lambs, they're still growing, they still need the extra protein. We got some dirty bums in here. We dewormed all the ones with the dirty bums, but I don't see sign of um, worms, but because we uh, got worms Earlier in the year, we're a little sensitive to it right now, but I'm pretty sure it's from, uh, they just got put out on that new pasture that has a lot of clover in it. And it's kind of, um, the pastures are kind of wet now, like mucky, not like they are in the summer, nice and dry. So I'm attributing it mainly to uh, 
their diet. Hi, how you doing? <laughs> okay, so Arnie's messing around with a ram, Casanova, and Keen doesn't like it. So Keen's trying to knock Arnie off. But I want to show you an interesting thing. Might be more interesting to Michael than to some others. But this is a killer here. He's in the breeding mood right now. And see, he just pushed that ram off. But he's humping on a, another male ram. But if you notice, on this ram, he's got blood all over his tail. I thought he had parasites or something the other day. So I went and checked it because I thought he was injured or, or had blood coming out of his uh, behind. But he doesn't. But he does have blood back there all over his rear end. And if you look at Killer here, Killer's got blood all over the tip of his uh, penis. <coughs> See that? That's blood hanging off. Um, he's eating. He's wanting to breed. Um, but we're thinking that he's passed a stone. He's feeling a lot better now. But <coughs> the stones are really sharp. And um, it looks, Arnie thinks... Um, well, it's a, little, a little bit swelling here yet, eh? but the lump is gone. But I don't know. We'll see how it, we... Honestly, look at me. <laughs> what nice. Well, so... Um, well, he's feeling better. He's feeling much better. Well, you heard what Arnie said about the swelling. But um, he's acting um, totally 100% now, except for the bleeding. But um, it, the urinary stones are um, like crystals, and they're jagged. And the way uh, a ram's urethra is kind of designed, it's a really, really weird thing. It, spirals at the end in a little corkscrew and it's very very fine and that's uh, where the blockages normally um, occur and I know with veterinarians they will come and cut that tip off so that um, the stones have an easier passage to get out we didn't do that looks like he passed it on his own um, and of course, if it was cutting them, it would have been a little bit painful. But yeah, we couldn't figure out why that ram yesterday had blood on the back of him. And today we're watching um, Killer and we're seeing why. But this is what the rams are doing as well. It's that, that type of season and they're all wanting to smack each other. Except for Casanova. <laughs> Oh, you, and you didn't bring his clippers? Oh, hi. Hi. You're very nice. Yes, you are. You're a grade, but you're handsome. And Casanova is very handsome. Oh, you are a big, handsome boy. Oh, yes, you are. Yeah, this is going to end up to be a 200-pound ram. <laughs> well, well, he's... Yeah, he's got the same bloodlines as Gimli and Ferdinand, so you can expect he's going to be a big one. And this is Keen here. Keen's another sweetheart. He went to the shows. and uh, But they're all in the mood right now. Here we have Cash. Cash is looking really nice. And there's Calvin. You put your arm around him so I can take a picture. I don't know if he has the right dorset head. It'll roll down the cheeks. That is the right dorset head. <laughs> Hi, buddies. Oh, look at him. He's actually loving me. He loves me more than you do, huh? That's a, probably true. I think he does. <laughs> he appreciates me. Yeah, I think so. Oh. Cause that's because you feed him. You don't feed me ever. <laughs> So uh, Casanova, his
being Dorset and being one of the bigger rams in the ram lamb pen, he needs his uh, hoofs trimming badly. If you don't trim uh, the lamb's hooves when you see them overgrowing, uh, you're going to create foot problems and um, walking problems, bone problems, because they'll, uh, they'll walk funny and that will cause their legs to and feet to bend if they're not you want a nice flat hoof for them to walk on <laughs> yeah when in the ram pen because they're so friendly whenever you do anything the whole the whole group has to come and observe rams are definitely in a pernickety mood today they're all uh trying to hit and dominate each other so Hopefully nobody hurts themselves today. Rams can be totally ridiculous. There's a puddle here. They don't like the puddles. But they want to fight today. Hey, come on you guys. That's how they uh, kill each other. Hey, 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 hey! Stop them! Hey, Rams want to do things like that. We got scared him off. We had to separate them. And but you see, this ram is looking, looking for where that ram went because he, they recognize each other and. For some reason, they were having a dispute. Buddy, that's how you get killed. Um, yep, we have had rams kill each other. It's not common, but it does happen when they're doing things like that. <coughs> Buddy, all your friends are out there, but I don't want battling. Now he's noticed that they're all gone. So he's going to run out there. But it's uh, breeding season. The weather is cool. The rams are pumped up. They're not behaving normally. Ben, come on back. So he's going to go out there. And guaranteed he's going to search out that ram he was fighting with. So I'm going to turn it off now. And we're not going to watch because there's not a lot you can do to stop that. We split them up and hopefully the grazing will uh, keep them occupied and they'll forget about whatever it was that they thought was worth fighting over. Okay, today we're putting the halter on Felon. He's going to come out now. We're at the stage where uh, we're going to remove some rams and uh, put in cleanups just in case the ram wasn't working. So um, we've got Geronimo. <laughs> who is Felon's son in the other pen. So we're gonna join the two groups together. And because Felon is older, we're gonna put the two groups in with the younger ram. And uh, we don't have to scan the ewes again because uh, we know they're not related because uh, Geronimo is this one's son. We are going to bring him back to the barn. And we're going to take those, now we're nervous about the small testicles, so we're going to pull those two and put a clean up in with them, join those two groups together. They've been in for a long time, so most of them should be bred. But um, Handsome is related to those two, and we didn't use them this year, so it's safe to put Handsome in that group as a clean up. So I think that's what we're going to do. We would have liked to have used Gladiator, but um, Gladiator's probably related to too many ewes in those groups. So after a major battle, we got the two rams out of here. They didn't want to leave, and the two rams wanted to kill each other. And we've got Handsome in here. He's going to be a cleanup. We're going to join these two groups together. Um, we're going to assume that pretty well everyone's bred anyway, or maybe all of them. But uh, you never know with rams. If they missed anybody and a new one, he'll be all excited. So chances are if there is somebody open, he'll pick it out. 
and uh, clean up rams are only going to be in here for about a month and that's it. So right now Arnie's taking the divider wall down. So these group guys will get to run around both sides of the pen now. And there's only going to be one ram in here. And of course on my records I will be writing down when we switch rams out so we know when the lambs are born whose lambs are whose. It's okay guys. Wow. So we're here, um, Fargo, <coughs> who's cleaning up his ewes, oh. um, has re really, really bad hooves, so we're, we're going to trim him while we're here, and we're going to take a little lunch break, and we're going to put, uh, <coughs> move the ewes over for Geronimo's group and get a, um, a cleanup group going there. So, <coughs> we moved a bunch of rams today. Took three rams out of breeding groups and put two rams back in to see if they're all bred. So in that barn there, there's uh, 70 ewes with one new ram and nobody cycling today. So that tells me they all got bred probably. And uh, so. This is the problem right here. You see this here? This is uh, this ram right here. Right here with the numbers on the back is one we took out. See, look at the fighting going on there. So these guys are gonna spend the whole day in here till nine o'clock tonight with no water, no feed, and they're gonna get rid of their frustration. Not you. So that's what's happening now. So where's the other one I pulled out? Uh, hmm, nobody jumped out, did they? Oh, there they are there. So the, the two, with the numbers on their backs, were purchased uh, this summer. And they're the ones that I took out of the breeding group, so they had the female smell all over them. And uh, they're going to be getting rid of their frustration here for a while. So they're quite boxed up, you see? So they can't get a run at each other. And hopefully, uh, no one's going to die here. But I don't think people realize how strong rams can be. See, this, this guy here has got a real bad... This guy right here has is, is got moved your head. This guy here's got a real bad, real bad attitude. That one right there. That one there has really got a bad attitude. Maybe I should make it a little smaller. Uh, but, uh, I think it's okay. Anyway, they're going to spend in this barn here till 9 o'clock tonight. And when it's dark, I'm going to feed them. And we're going to let them loose. We've had our lunch, so now our job is to we're gonna merge this group here which is Geronimo's group with Felon's group which was in the far corner but he's gone now and uh, in order to do that we're gonna take down this dividing wall between Geronimo and Jethro and have this whole one side for Geronimo and Jethro and Snappy father and son are going to be on the other side in their two separate groups still. The step is to move the groups around. That means one group has to temporarily go outside in the rain, poor things. That's Jethro's group. They'll actually like that because they'll get some quick grazing done, even though that pasture is mainly weeds. Next thing is to move Felon's group over into Jethro's pen. They go into their new home. Gotta have gates and pins that attach everywhere. Makes life so much easier. Next thing to do is move the blue feeders. So 
So what he's doing now is he's gonna bring one blue feeder to the front and one blue feeder to the back. And he's gonna set it up as if it's a catch pen. So this way, um, right now it's just breeding groups, but every now and then somebody has pink eye or a sore foot or something, and we have to run and catch them. So if we have that here, then we can kind of run them into the corner and they're kind of trapped. It's a lot easier to catch them if you have a trap area in each pin. And we're going to do the same with the blue feeder back there. We're going to put it against the wall at the back as well. So the reason we're doing um, cleanup rams and stuff is in the past we have had a ram that for one reason or another hasn't bred his use. So now usually the last uh, two cycles we'll put in a cleanup ram to hopefully catch anyone that was missed. And hopefully there isn't anyone that was missed, but just in case it covers all your bases. And so we have groups set up so that um, we know that we can merge groups and put in a an unrelated ram. So Felon and Geronimo were related. So it's easy to merge those two groups because those these ewes would have been selected as being unrelated to Felon and Geronimo. So we, uh, we can take Felon out and merge him with Geronimo knowing that Felon's ewes would all be unrelated as well. If that makes sense. And same with the other two rams we pulled out. Um, we put in um, Handsome because Handsome we know for a fact is related to none of our use. So he could easily be popped into that group with no worry about inbreeding. Okay, next job is to bring in that group that went outside. They're going to the other side of the barn today. They're all in. Geronimo's group has a really big pen now. That'll make them really happy. And uh, Jethro's back here with his same group. We trust him, he's a young ram. Should have no problem with a young ram. Snappy's his dad. Quite tr I quite trust Snappy too, because he's always been a good breeder for us, despite his age. So it's not like rams are trouble, but you do have to watch more things with rams. You have to feed them a little differently. You have to watch for the fighting. Are their testicles big enough? Are they breeding? Do they have stones? Just a little more work involved with a ram. Okay, so we're gonna call that a day. Hope you join us again tomorrow for the next episode at Utopia Farms. Bye for now. Bye for now.